Hey, welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm gonna show you the three basic steps to cut through dovetails by hand. It really starts with the, uh, the layout, then how do you do the cuts, and then some fine tuning. And there's, there's two components to the layouts and the cuts, right? You first are going to lay out the tails. Some people lay out the pins first. I find it easier to do the tails first. So we'll show you how to lay out the tails, and then we'll cut the tails. Then we'll lay out the pin board, and we'll cut the pin, and then we'll do a little bit of fine tuning just to make sure the joints fit because you don't want to force them or it'll crack the board. And uh, that'll be it. So three basic steps, like I said, layout, cutting, and then some fine tuning. And it's actually easier than you think. So before we get started on the laying out of the tails, we have to make a couple of marks on the, the boards here. So I've got my tail boards, and then I've got my pin board, which will be the back. So we start by taking the, the thickness of the, the pin board and transferring that. Normally you would transfer to all four sides of the tailboard, but because I'm not gonna cut the bottom of this, I'm only gonna transfer to three sides. But you're gonna transfer that over. And I'm not gonna take it all the way to the end because we're not gonna cut that. And I'll do it on both tails. Well, actually, I'll show you. I, I prefer to cut both the, both the tail boards at the same time, and there's some advantage to that, which I'll show you when we get over to the vise and we start cutting these. So we're gonna go ahead and get those marked up, and then we're gonna mark the pin board. And same basic process. I'm gonna measure the thickness of my tail board, and then on the pin board, I'm only going to mark up the face side and the back side. I'm not gonna mark up the edges because we're not gonna be cutting on the edges, as you'll see here in a, in a minute. So we're gonna cut, mark these up, and then uh, we'll move over to the vise. So I'll get set up in the vise, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we're set up in the vise. As you can see here, I've got the two boards clamped together face to face. I do this for two reasons. The first is it helps with tear out or it actually helps eliminate tear out on the show side or the face side because I've got the boards clamped together. The other thing that it does is it gives me a larger surface to reference uh, when I'm cutting and it makes it easier for me to maintain a, a straight uh, cut versus on a shorter board. Obviously you have less surface to reference. So we'll, we'll show you that when we get into the cut, but let's start with the layout. So a couple of things to keep in mind when you're doing layout, you can use Calipers, some people use calipers. You could just use a tape measure and a pencil. It, it really doesn't matter if you don't have calipers. Um, as far as the, the layout, it, it really doesn't matter the size. So I, I tend to try and keep my, my end pins about the same, you know, about quarter to three eighths of an inch, depending on the size of the tails I'm gonna do. And then the next thing is to lay out your tails. And, you know, ideally you want them to be symmetrical, right? Um, but it doesn't have to. I've seen designs where some people make the center one uh, larger and the outside one smaller. So it's all up to personal preference. It doesn't add to any strength by making them more or fewer tails. The other thing that I will tell you is when it comes to the um, the angle, which we'll show you here in a quick second, it doesn't matter the angle. The main thing is to, you wanna try and keep it between seven and 15 degrees. Now, I tend to use a one to six ratio, which gets me a nine and a half degree angle. Um, they say you should use that for softwoods. And uh, I, uh, like I said, I use it all the time because I, I like the steeper angle. Like a one to seven ratio is an eight degree angle and a one to eight ratio is a seven degree angle. They say you can use a one to eight for hardwoods. Like I said, it doesn't add any strength. So it's all about the appearance. And as you can see here, I'm just laying out my marks and then we'll cut. So I'll continue to lay these out and then uh, I'll come back to you and show you how we do the cut. 
Okay, so we've got everything marked out. As you can see, I've marked the area that we're going to cut out. Uh, one of the rules with cutting is you always want to cut into the waste. You can always remove wood if you don't cut close enough to the line, but you can never put it back. So make sure that you're uh, cutting in the waste area. And I like to, uh, to do it freehand. They make devices, show you similar to, similar to this. It's like a magnetic device that you can clamp on and use to hold your saw. I, I tried it once. I, like, the nice thing is, but the bad thing is it doesn't work really well with a, with a short dovetail saw, and I prefer this dovetail saw versus like a Japanese pole saw. Um, but do, you can have these. Like, you could use these and to, to practice and get started. Um, I prefer, like I said, to do it all freehand. Like, is it always going to be as consistently perfect as it would with the magnet? No. Uh, but that's part of the pride that I take in the doing it myself by hand. So, all right, we're going to start cutting this out. And it's really important to give yourself a guide. Start slow. This particular saw that I have from Rob Cosman has some small teeth, so it makes it easier to get started in the front. And then we'll cut through. Like I said, remember, cut in the waste area. Just down to the line, just like that. And I usually do all the same angles first and then I, then I flip just so I can get a, a pattern and a rhythm going. Now that I've got all my angle cuts done, I'm gonna use a fret saw, you could use a coping saw, or whatever, to go in and cut out as much of the waste as I can. And then we'll do some fine tuning after that. Flip it over here. And we're gonna cut that one edge. But before I do that, I like to give my saw a little spot by once again, you wanna go straight and on the waist side. That's the main, that's how you do the main cut on the dovetails. Now we're gonna go and clean this, these up with a chisel real quick. So let me move the camera and we'll show you how to do that. So the next step is to clean up this waste here, right? And I like to, you know, work your way to that line. Don't go, don't go after it all at once because when you hit the chisel, it could push it into here and you wanna protect that line. So I always just nibble at it until I can, get to a good spot and you only want to go like I said about halfway through you don't want to blow out the other side nice sharp chisel helps and then we'll work our way along here. Okay, and we flip the board over and we come at it from the other side. And there you have it. So hopefully that makes it easy for you to see, right? Like you really want to get those nice and clean. So we did the layout and we cut the tails. Now we're going to do the layout for the pins and cut the pins and then we'll do final fit. So let's go back to the vise. Okay, now that we've cut the, the tails, we're gonna go ahead and 
line it up so that we can lay out the pin cuts and then we'll do the pin cuts real quick. Uh, before I get started, I laid a piece of tape on the back of this right where the where this bottomed out and that tape's going to help me line it up to the very edge of the board as you'll see here in a second. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this in here and make it level with my plane just so I have a level surface. Set the plane back and we have the board. It's important to make sure your edges stay together. So just grab something flat to nail them together like that. And then once you've got it all lined up, apply pressure and don't let it move. I just use a, a knife. There's a bunch of different tools that you can get to mark this, but I just put a knife mark in there. It gives me a nice crisp edge to work towards. And as soon as I mark this up, I'll put some pencil marks on here so you can see the layout. All right, now it's time to make our cuts in the pin board. The, the key with this is making sure you're cutting plumb, right? What you don't want to do is go in at an angle in either way. If it helps, take a little square just to get your blade straight up and down, just to get you a starting point. And then use your fingers as a guide. And you're going to make all these cuts like this straight down, follow your lines. Same as before, we're going to use the fret saw or coping saw, whatever you have, to go in and remove this waste. And then we'll do some cleanup. So let me get these cut out. I'll show you how we do the cleanup and we'll be right back. Okay, the cleanup process is pretty much the same as it was for the tails. We're just gonna go in and clean out this extra bit that we didn't cut out with the fret saw. Get these bottoms nice and flat. I'll knock this out off camera and then I'll take you to the final fine tuning that we'll do here in a second. Okay, so now we'll do some fine tuning because it's not quite ready to drop down in there. But remember those knife marks that I put in there? Now they become very easy to find. You find where they're at. I should use a smaller chisel and nibble at it just so we don't overcut. The key is to make sure that your chisel doesn't bow out. See how that leans back a little bit? Let's, let's make sure. There you have it. As easy as one, two, three, right? Lay out the tails, cut the tails, lay out the pins, cut the pins, 
little fine tuning along the way, and you got yourself a dovetail. Remember, it's about the appearance, the angles, all that are all up to you, whatever, you're, whatever look you're going for. And if it's not perfect, don't beat yourself up. That's what makes it look like it's hand cut, gives it a little bit of character, right? As opposed to being machine cut, where you can tell it's machine cut. So those little imperfections, own them. I own mine. It's not perfect, but I'm proud of the work that I did. So hopefully you like this video. If so, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and I'll keep bringing you more videos.